Maestro, first of all, it's great to have you back in Prague. It seems you like it here. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be back in these special times in Prague. I love Prague. I love the orchestra. It's something which I always ad, um, admire to, to be here in mm. this beautiful historic city. Mm. You had a very successful uh, career as a musician, as a violist. Uh, you played in a uh, Wiener Symphoniker. My question is, you know the stage from both sides, from the orchestra side and now from the conductor side. Is it uh, an advantage if you know how the orchestra thinks? Well, it's indeed an, a big advantage, I think. You know, First of all, to know how an orchestra functions, to be a member of a group and listening and knowing what happens when you play your own part. Uh, uh, that's something which I don't want to miss, and it still carries on in my career as a conductor. Of course, you can imagine to want to be a conductor and sitting in an orchestra, you watch every conductor, every with a, with a, like an eagle, you know. You you you. What is he doing? How does he doing? And and, and what can I learn from this? And, and this is something which I really like so much. It, it is uh, something and an experience which I would wish that every conductor has. In the second half of the concert, we are looking forward to hear the Beethoven's uh, Symphony Number no. One. Uh, is there something special about the composition you would like to mention before we hear it? Uh, Beethoven, when he wrote this piece and composed it in um, 1799 and World Premier in 1800, um, there was no metronome numbers. So he wrote some titles, Allegro molto vivace, Adagio molto. Every title, every uh, 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 tempo has something molto and vivace, something quick. Now, 1817, uh, Beethoven has um, um, got to know it already before um, the metronome numbers, uh, so by Meltzl. So he met Mr. Meltzl and was very interested in, 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 in how can I uh, tell the people, the musicians and conductors in the future which kind of tempo I want to have. So in 18, 1917 he wrote the metronome numbers um, of the pieces. And that's, we are very happy and very lucky that we have now the idea what he thought about the tempi. And surprisingly, the tempi are very quick. Very quick. Another thing which um, is also to mention is, you know, we have a first movement, a slow second movement, then we have a menuetto, and then we have a, a light and, um, a finale. And he keeps this. But the surprise is that the second movement is actually like a tempo of a menuetto. It's actually in three, it's like a dance. It sounds like a third movement from Haydn or from, from Mozart. So then the metronome number shows a very quick tempo. It's so to say in one, and you will see me conducting in one. It's a dance in one. And because it is a type of a dance, like a, nearly a minuet or the second movement, the third movement has to be even quicker. So it's a very quick uh, third movement, and the last movement is even quicker. So we have a, a very brilliant idea of, of Beethoven to be different from the others. And um, so I'm, I'm always surprised uh, what this, this wonderful uh, composer as a first symphony I presented to us as a gift already mm. and showing already what he will probably um, conduct or compose when, when he worked on the Ninth Symphony.